All right, good morning everybody. Batten down the hatches and welcome to lesson 25. Today we're talking about the listing of the factors of whole numbers. So let's see and start with a little bit of review. Numbers that are multiplied together are called factors. We learned that back in lesson 15. The answer to a multiplication problem is called the product, right? If you think 8 times 5 equals 40, 8 and 5 are truly factors. But that's not really how we're going to utilize them. we got to think of one other. But we also know that multiplication and division are what we called inverse operations, right? If we went 8 times 5 equals 40, we can go in reverse with the opposite sign. So 40 divided by 5 equals 8, and 40 divided by 8 equals 5. 5 and 8 are still factors, right? So here's how we got to start thinking about it when they start asking us to factor any number. So we got to start thinking that factors of a number are all the numbers that can divide evenly into a dividend the number inside the division box without leaving a remainder. 40 divided by 5, well, 5's dividing into 40 eight whole times, or 40 divided by 8 goes in there five whole times with no remainder. 8 and 5 are factors because they both divide evenly without a remainder. Another little bit of review brought to you by the fine folks at Lesson 22. Do you remember talking about the dividing rules? Here's where it starts getting extremely, extremely important. Your dividing rules to review were ways to tell if a number will divide evenly without a remainder is what we described it as. So we said a dividend will divide evenly by 2 if it's even. So 2 has to be a factor of any even number. We told you that a dividend will divide evenly by 5 if it ends in 5 or 0. So you got to make the connection that 5 is a factor of any number that ends in 5 or 0. And we lastly told you that a dividend will divide evenly by 10 if it ends in 0. So guess what? 10 is a factor of any number that ends in 0. One last piece of explaining before we see how it all ties together. Last thing you need to know is that every number, except for the number 1, has at least two factors. One times itself, because do you remember the identity property of multiplication, right? Numbers that have only two factors are called prime numbers. We had to throw that out there, but it's not going to factor too importantly today. And the last little thing I want to tell you when we list factors of numbers that the factors must be written in order from least to greatest. You can, I'll show you how to figure it out in a pretty easy way, but you can't leave it as your answer. The last step will be to list them in order from least to greatest. So let's start with 12 right now, right? Anytime you're trying to figure out a factor, I think it's easiest to think. What times what gives you 12? I always recommend with the two easiest ones. Always start with one times the number. That's the easiest. What else will give you 12? Well, three times four. For those people who are fuzzy on their multiplication facts, this is going to separate those people. Because if you're still struggling, you're really going to struggle with this. It's tough enough thinking about the answers, much less the factors each time. Practice, 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 right? And lastly, hey, I know that's an even number. 
So I know two has to be a factor. Two times six would give me 12. Now, these are all the factors of 12. If you listed three times four, you don't have to go and list four times three. The factors only have to be listed once. But you can't leave this as your answer and expect me to mark it correct. The last step, we got to put them in order, least to greatest. So we have one. Then we have two. This is going to be really important when you take your Socrative quiz. Then we have three. And there's going to be instructions on how to type them in, right? We're going to type number, and then a comma, then the number, then a comma, then a number. We also have four. We have six and 12 for the last two, right? Number, comma, number, comma, number, comma. Till you get to the end, you don't ever have to put a comma at the one on the end, right? So that is how to list factors. Think what times what gives you the number, but when you write the answer, they must be written from least to greatest. Okay, let's try a couple easier ones. Factors of 11. What times what is going to give me 11? Well, let's start with the easiest because every number has at least two factors, right? Does anything else multiplied together give us 11? Do you know? Nope, that is it. 11 is actually a prime number. I was just seeing if you were thinking. Check out this one. Because we said that every number has at least two factors except for one. What times what gives me one? Well, one times one. But here's the good news. When you list out factors, you only have to list them once. One does not have two factors. One is the only number that only has one factor. It's one times one, but it's the same number. Let's try this one for 24. You got to think, what times what is going to give me 24? So I want to start with the easy ones. One times 24. Start thinking about your divisibility rules. Hey, it's even, so I know 2 times 12. If you didn't know 2 times 12, you better start making peace with those divisibility rules, right? We also have 3 times 8, right? 3 times 8 is also going to give me 24. And lastly, 4 times 6, right? So I don't think I want to spend too much more time trying to write with no matter how fancy my pen is. I don't want to bore everybody. Let's type this in. I'm going to go 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, 4, comma, 6, comma, 8, comma, 12, comma, 24. When you take your Socrative quiz, that's exactly how to input the numbers from least to greatest, number, comma, number, comma, no spaces. Check out this one. Two is not a factor of which of these numbers. Now, if you're one of those people unfortunate enough to be still struggling with your multiplication facts, and you're hoping, oh, Mr. Hines said I at least get one copy of a multiplication table, this isn't going to save you at all because multiplication charts don't go up this high, do they? What are we going to do? Well, I could put each one into a division box. Well, you could after Lesson 26, but we can't even divide it. What are we going to do? Well, let's go back and think about the divisibility rules. Hey, a dividend will divide evenly by two if it's even. That's something good to think about. So two's 
not a factor of which one of these numbers? Well, that guy's even because he ends in 4. This guy's even because he ends in 6. This guy's even because he ends in 0. Which one is 2 not a factor of? 489. Why? Because of that 9, right? 9 is an odd digit. So let's try another one. 5 is not a factor of which of these numbers? Well, if we need to go back and think about the divisibility rules from Lesson 22, a dividend will divide evenly by 5 if it ends in 5 or 0. So 5 is a factor of any number that ends in 5 or 0, right? So let's put this in a play. Well, this guy's ending in 0. This guy's ending in 5. This guy's ending in a 0. And even though I have two 5s here, he ends in 1. So 5 is not a factor of 551. And it is the end. You are definitely going to want a piece of paper, probably a multiplication chart, and good luck on the Socrative quiz.